Hi, I'm Tony Northrop. And I'm Chelsea. And this is our weekly, mostly weekly, uh, wrap up of everything that's new and important in photography, as well as our review of reader photos. Yeah. We're kind of trying out like a TV show format here. Like just as an exercise, we're kind of imagining like what if there were a TV show just for people into photography, what kind of stuff would it cover? So I'd be interested in getting your feedback on that. Like what would you like to see in a TV show about photography? Um, I'll tell you some of the stuff we have planned for today. Uh, we have news like the new cameras that are out, at least the important ones. Uh, the A7 is the one I'm most excited about, but Nikon has a couple of announcements too. And we're going to provide you a couple of tips. We have a Photoshop tip and a Lightroom tip coming yep. up. And of course, we have like 60 or 65 reader photos to review, edit, and critique. And uh, that's going to come up at the end of the show. But I highly recommend you hang around and watch that because there's a lot to learn just by watching us review and edit photos. Right. Tony and I have some exciting new things. So Tony's been trying to wear photography t-shirts in his videos and he ran out. So I designed my own for him and people wanted them. So those are up for sale now. Um, you have the stay focused one I'm wearing, keep it glassy that Tony's wearing. Uh, they come in pink for ladies. And also if you're a very devoted fan, we made up stunner t-shirts. And I'm actually gonna start giving these out to people that win our photo challenges. So if you're a stunner and you're submitting your pictures to our monthly challenges, you have a chance to win a t-shirt or some other cool goods from our store. And you know what else? All of these, except for the white one, they're all uh, middle gray. That's right, you can meter it right off of that. And uh, that's going to be important for the photography tip that we have coming up. I'm going to show you how to meter stuff with It's actually not completely middle gray. I checked. Why are you trying to not sell t-shirts? Oh, yeah, it's middle gray. <laughs> um, so what else do we have? Oh, we have a DVD out as well. Oh, right. Uh, this is our first DVD that's in print. This is our composition DVD. And it has uh, quick tips in it too. So this is the first in a series of uh, four DVDs that are gonna make up our Photography Beginners DVD pack. Um, this is about an hour and a half long. Yeah. And it's for sale immediately and shipping immediately. But even more exciting is we have the four DVD pack, a total of six hours available for pre-order now. Uh, so head over to sdpcommunity.com. Normally that's $74.99, which is a steep discount on the $100 that you'd spend on the four DVD set. Um, but we're gonna give you a coupon, pre-order. The coupon code is pre-order. So if you do that, then the whole DVD set will be just uh, about under 50 bucks. It'll be $49.99. Check out our streaming videos on our site, sdpcommunity.com. Uh, you can buy the DVD and stream it immediately on our site before you get your physical DVD, or if you're not interested in that, you can just stream it. But here's a preview of that video now. Here's one last practice that might seem a little extreme, but I promise if you do this and keep at it for a week, you will master manual mode on your camera as well as aperture, shutter speed, and ISO. What we're gonna do is we're gonna put our camera into manual mode and then we're gonna leave it there. So I'll switch my camera over to manual. From now on in for the next week, we are going to manually determine the metering for a scene using a smartphone. If you don't happen to have a smartphone, you can use any external light meter, um, but we're decoupling the metering from your camera. So we're no longer going to use your camera's auto exposure system iPhone apps are available for free as well as Android apps. Um, I'm gonna use one that's just called Light Meter, but I promise if you search your app store, you'll have an app that can do it. A tablet can work too. Anything that has a built-in camera will probably have an app available for it. So the first step will be to just pick a general ISO. Um, so I'm indoors here under decent light and ISO 800 is good for that. If I were outdoors in shade, I'd pick ISO 400. If I were outdoors in full sunlight, I'd go ahead and pick ISO 100. And if you're in like a dark room, a bar or a restaurant, go ahead and go for ISO 3200. But for me, ISO 800 is gonna work well. So I'm gonna go ahead and pick ISO 800 here. Um, then for my aperture, I'll, I'll go ahead and shoot at the lowest f-stop number that this lens supports. So for me, that's f4. For your lens, it might be f5.6. So I'll dial in f4 there. And then I'm just gonna use this app to tell me the shutter speed that I need to use. So I'm gonna go ahead and point the app, it's metering off the red square there, at my dad's forehead. And you can see it's telling me the right shutter speed is 1 250th of a second. 
So I'm going to copy these settings into my camera here. So I've got it in manual mode and I'll set it to f4 and then 1 to 50th of a second and I'm going to manually dial in the ISO, had it on auto ISO. So now I'll take a picture. So you can see that turned out a little underexposed. I'll look at the histogram here. And we can see the histogram is all in like the left side here. Uh, the reason that it came out underexposed is that my dad's skin tone is a little brighter than middle gray. And when your camera meters, it kind of assumes whatever you're metering off of is some sort of mid-tone, middle gray basically. And it tries to make that the center of the histogram. So anything that is more reflective, brighter than whatever you meter from is going to show up closer to white. Anything that's darker or less reflective is going to show up closer to black. So it just so happens that I don't want my dad's skin to be middle gray because it will appear too dark. Instead, I need to meter off of something a little darker in the scene. Now, it doesn't have to be a skin tone or a shade of gray. It can be a color, too. Um, and so looking at my dad here, his red shirt looks a little darker. So I'm going to go ahead and take a metering off of that. And wouldn't you know it, the shutter speed is getting longer and longer. Now it's saying 1 60th of a second. So I took a sample shot and realized I was metering off of something too bright. Now I'm metering off of something a little darker. And I'm going to go ahead and adjust the shutter speed to that 1 60th of a second and we'll try it again. So that's looking much better. My dad's face is closer to the right side of the histogram. Um, if I wanted to make it the whole thing a little bit brighter, normally I would just use exposure compensation on the camera itself. But we're doing this manually, right? So I need to think to myself, what can I do to make the shot brighter? I could use a slower shutter speed. I could use a smaller f-stop number, or I could use a higher ISO. So I need to pick from one of those three and then dial it into the camera. So for me, I think I'm going to use a slower shutter speed. So I'm going to just go down a full stop from where I was, um, and I'll go, I'll go all the way down to 1 60th of a second and take another shot. So looking at the histogram, I can see nothing really is blown out. My dad's face is close to the right side of the histogram. And I can see from the blinkies that I have going that just a few highlights in his head are blinking. Um, so that's a pretty proper exposure. And this is the kind of process that you're going to have to go through for the next week while you're using decoupled metering. And I don't want any cheating. I know your camera will give you a hint and it will tell you whether it thinks you're underexposing or overexposing. Don't pay attention to that hint. I want you to use only your smartphone app or whatever it is you're using to meter and your own head. I need you to manually copy all the settings from your meter over to your phone. And that process of copying those settings will make you think about them. You'll start to really understand what f4 and f5.6 are and what 1 60th and 1 60th of a second are. And whenever you start to have a problem and you have to manually decide which of those settings to adjust, well, you're going to be learning at the same time. So you might miss a few shots as you go about it, um, but I promise it will make a difference for the rest of your life as you're taking pictures, no matter which camera you're using in the future. I do want to show you a couple other things that can happen. I'm going to try metering off of this white table and then taking a picture of my dad. So metering with my app told me I needed to shoot at 1 750th of a second because this bright table is pretty bright and I already know what the proper exposure is and this is a faster shutter speed. So what do you think? Is the picture going to come out too bright or too dark? Well, let's find out. Wow, way too dark. He's still a handsome devil in there, but I'm going to have to use a much slower shutter speed to expose it properly. And the lesson I'd like to show you is the same one we talked about earlier. If you meter off of something bright, then you're going to get a dark overall picture and you need to adjust for it manually. If you meter off of something dark, your picture is going to come out a little overexposed. I wanted to follow up on my 70D video review. I talked a lot about how awesome the video focusing is on the 70D, and most of that I still stand behind, but we're using that 70D just about every day, and I'll say it has a little glitch. If, if you watch this camera over here closely, uh, Justin's working on, on the close-up camera, um, you'll see that every now and then it flakes out. 
it goes out of focus and then it goes back in focus and I, I think this probably happens over the course of like 10 frames, like one third of a second, like a really short period of time, but it definitely happens and you might never notice it and it's fine for casual videography, but I'm beginning to wonder if it's gonna be okay for professional level videography. Maybe Canon will fix this problem with a update, firmware update, maybe not, just wanted you to be aware. So some good news is that Sony has some new cameras. What do you know about those, Tony? They have the A7 and the A7R. The A7 is the lower end model. Uh, what are the specs on it? Uh, 24 megapixels and the A7R has that Nikon D800 sensor with 36 megapixels. Sony actually makes the sensors for Nikon. Um, and that's pretty amazing that they're cramming these full frame sensors in a mirrorless body. I'm really, really excited about this system. Um, but I'm also kind of hesitant about it. Um, first, I want to show you the benefits of being mirrorless. So I've dragged out two of my old manual medium format cameras here just to illustrate the size differences. Mirrorless cameras can be much smaller than a DSLR. Um, so what we have here is basically a mirrorless camera. This is a TLR. And so you can kind of see the width here. Um, it's about that big. These two cameras have the same sensor size. This is a normal lens, which is about 100 millimeters, but about equivalent to a 50 millimeter lens in the 35 millimeter format world. Um, but look how thick this camera is compared to how thick this camera is. Yeah, it's about double, it's about twice as big. Yeah, I'll kind of hold them side by side, but yeah, you can see it's much, much thicker. Um, and also this camera has this really big, heavy prism on the top. Uh, these are both traits, the extra width and the, the prism here are traits of SLR, single lens reflex cameras, because they have to have this pesky mirror inside. And that's why we call mirrorless cameras mirrorless because they don't have this mirror. Um, so what happens with the mirror is the mirror redirects light from the lens. Instead of going to the sensor, it bounces it up through your prism and the mirror has to be big. And the body of a DSLR camera has to be large enough to accommodate this massive lens. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take this camera apart a little bit so you can see the mirror a little bit better. Um, and if you look through here, you can see that big old mirror in there. And when I take a picture with it, it flips up out of the way and reveals the film or the sensor at the back. And this is true of all modern DSLRs. They have this big mirror and it has to flip out of the way and it has to be about as big as the uh, digital sensor, a little bit bigger. So you have to have this big wide thing because it needs to flip up and down. So because of that, the DSLR bodies are always much thicker than a mirrorless body. But that's not all that makes DSLRs bigger than mirrorless cameras. The SLR lens design has to be designed to focus well behind the back of the lens. So the optics have to be designed to actually focus way back here or at the back of your DSLR. So they can't focus right here. And a mirrorless lens can focus just a few millimeters behind the back of the lens. That allows the lens itself to be more compact, assuming it's actually designed to be used with mirrorless cameras and not like a SLR lens that has been just retrofitted onto the mirrorless design. So smaller lenses and a more compact body mean that mirrorless cameras can be smaller and lighter, but the sensors can be just as capable. And in fact, the optics can actually be higher quality. That's part of why everybody loves their Leicas and their old viewfinder cameras because they were just sharper than the SLRs. So you know me and I love my big sensors and that's why I'm really excited about the A7 and the A7R. Um, but I'm not gonna recommend them anytime soon because uh, Sony announced a total of five lenses with this new system. <laughs> and they're not especially exciting lenses. They're the, they're the first five lenses you'd expect. There's like a kit lens and a 50 millimeter F1.8. Um, but there's nothing especially fast. They have a 70 to 200 F4, but there's no 70 to 200 F2.8. So there's not even like a real portrait lens available. And the 50 millimeter is F1.8 and not F1.4. Um, so that's gonna be fine for the casual user. Uh, and if you just need a couple of lenses and you're just shooting your family and stuff, that's gonna be fine. It's not gonna be the right system for serious photographers just yet. Um, there are gonna be adapters that will allow you to use SLR lenses with it, but those adapters will basically just be adding a bunch of space that would normally be consumed by the mirror box on an SLR. 
and they'll let the lens work just fine, but they're also gonna be completely negating the benefits of having a mirrorless camera because it's just adding in a big spacer there and your lens is still gonna be big SLR lens. So my advice would be to limit yourself to just the uh, FE lenses that are designed for the mirrorless system and you know, just wait until the, some more lenses come out. Nikon came out with a new camera too. It's the D5300. It's about the same as Canon's T5i. Um, some new features that it has is Wi-Fi for the first time. And, and a Nikon camera. Yeah, and a Nikon camera. Uh, what else does it have, Tony? Uh, it has GPS built in. Oh, that's nice. Much like the Canon 6D, and I loved it in the 6. Um, it allows you to travel around and look up exactly where you took a picture uh, and Lightroom even has a mapping component So it'll look at the GPS coordinates and you can know exactly which intersection you're at uh, If you're like a landscape photographer it can help you find a location again if you're a wildlife photographer That's great because you can remember where you saw a particular animal and go back to it Anyway, I just love cameras with GPS. I wish more of them had it. So I'm excited that the uh, uh, 5300 has that so that's about $800 yeah, and the only thing I want to bring up is that it does 60 frames a second at 1080p, mm. which is great. That allows you to do some slow motion work at 1080p. Most other DSLRs just do 30 frames a second, so good for video. Nikon also came out with another camera, the D610. And that's $2,000, and it's a replacement for Nikon's D600. Yeah, so that's their base model full-frame camera. If you're in the Canon world, that's equivalent to the uh, 6. Um, and the previous one, the D600, was a great camera. And you were saying that they were having some problems with them though, right? Yeah, two-thirds of people, at least according to a poll I saw, had oil and dust problems on their uh, sensor. So something about the shutter mechanism or the mirror or something gets oil on the sensor and it screws up your pictures, it really does. The oil spots are really, really visible and it seems to happen just really consistently. Um, but it's not all that bad. Uh, first, it seems to go away after about 3,000 clicks, and it can be cleaned. So a lot of people aren't comfortable cleaning their sensors, um, but you should learn to clean your sensor. And in fact, if you check out our troubleshooting DVD, I show you exactly how to do it. Um, so I actually think this is a great opportunity because the 610 is coming out at a $2,000 price point, and I already see people unloading their uh, D600s. Um, so you can pick them up now for starting at about $1,200 used. And I would just say, get one that has more than 3,000 clicks on it and has been cleaned. Um, I think when the 610 is actually released um, and available for sale, it's pre-order now, I think we're gonna see a lot of people unloading their 600s and because the 600 is this pariah with the oil on the sensor, yeah. I don't think it's gonna be popular. I think it's gonna be underrated and I think it's gonna be a really great used buy. So this is a good time for the bargain shoppers to get a great camera at a low price. Yeah, get that entry level full frame camera. I swear if you're dealing with a crop camera now, you will never look back after you get a full frame camera. The image quality is just so, so, so much better but uh, they are expensive and so it's a good opportunity. So now we're gonna go straight to our reader reviews. So we're gonna look at your pictures and we're going to critique them and suggest some edits. Up first is a picture of a swan chasing a dog. <laughs> <laughs> our dog cowboy did this, the one that's in the videos. He saw the swan for the first time on the, on the river and just, just went after it with the intention of killing it and uh, it wasn't until he got closer that he realized the swan was actually much larger than him and he didn't know how to swim. <laughs> so he bailed on that pretty fast. This picture is cool. Yeah, all said, I, I think the picture turned out good. The composition is nice. It's filled with the subject. Uh, the colors what, are crazy. It's yeah, like it must be a fall. But I, love, I love that you can tell it's fall. It's do, do you think the focus should have been on the dog? So the bird? Um... Or am I the judge? I'd go for the dog because I think his expression is more important. But it's a minor point. That's the picture true. turned out we good. Do. That's a, you know what, Tony? You're a smart guy. I respect you. What's up? Here's a night photo. Um, it's lovely. The first thing I see is the like mixed color temperatures here. Is this in Boston with that light fest thing? Boston does do a very cool light fest, so I don't recognize this from Boston. No. What? So, I don't know. Well... It's cool, it's well done, it's nice and sharp. He overcame all the difficult parts of night photography. Uh, no noticeable noise. 
So it seems like everything was done correctly. Can't think of anything to add? No. Well, this is a thinker. <laughs> yeah, this is really nice. I like the silhouette. The placement of the motorcycle is really nice. Um, and I like that the motorcycle is a little bit abstracted. You know, you don't see the whole motorcycle, but you see enough element to know exactly what it is. Yeah, I like that it took me a moment to figure out what it was. I knew it was a motorcycle, but then I had to kind of figure out there was a helmet and it's me. What do you think? Better just a little bit brighter? Um, yeah. Yes. Okay. I just looked at the histogram and I saw this right edge here wasn't being used. And, you know, I always like to see just a little bit burnt out. I know. So you like to use the right edge. <laughs> Gotta use that whole histogram. What? This dog is about baby. This is my dog, Sandy. <laughs> no, it's not. It's somebody else's dog, but it looks a lot like it Sandy, like except... Let's bring up the shadows. Better groomed. Because it's little eyeballs are getting lost. Yeah, the, the whole picture is a little... I'll, I'll bring this back I here. Make eye contact with the dog. So we can but see, but just look into this little lost abyss of eyeballs. So look, these two right segments are just completely empty, and that's why the picture just looks gray. Um, this happens a lot with, especially after black and white conversion. So you just want to adjust the exposure so that it's filling up the whole histogram there. And if it's kind of in the middle like this, you want to bring the contrast up because that'll spread out the histogram across the entire uh, from left to right there. That looks good. I like that picture. Yeah, but you're right about you got it. Those eyes are super important. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, that's adorable. So okay. just looking at the before and after, that's before and that's after. Just a little bit of processing, we, but we super cute that pup. Life. I've been here. <clears throat> yeah, we were here just a couple of weeks ago recording the uh, landscapes DVD that we haven't released yet, but oh my God, it's just so a beautiful old, spot. Because you said a couple of weeks ago, and it's been like. Months. Yeah, and time just blurs when you time get old like us. Old folks like us. <laughs> um, I like this picture. I th the is it, it's HDR, right? Um, I was wondering if it was HDR, know. if the clarity was just pulled way up. It's, it's a little too grainy for me. Yeah, you know, it's something that needs to be done. But it's kind of a to style. be consistent with the mood of the picture, mm. and I don't know, maybe I have a predisposition because I've been there. I think this is the right mood if you had big waves crashing against the rocks, and if there were big storm clouds here. But the sky is a little peaceful, and the waves are a little small for this. It, it almost seems more like a peaceful picture, except the processing has been cranked up like it's an intense picture. Um, Cloning could have been a little more careful there. I can see they the, there's power lines everywhere. Hey, okay, we're on to well. I remember all those power lines, so I understand what they're working against. But yeah, you got to get the lines out. I think they got the pull out. Yeah, check um, in chapter nine of studying digital photography. There's a video about editing landscape photos where I specifically talk about removing power lines. You so know, check that out. Can I be honest? Sometimes I get a little lazy with this kind of stuff, thinking people won't notice, and they always do. So it really matters to kind of put in a little extra effort and get it right because every time I don't, people call me out on it. Yeah, and, and especially in stock. Like, they'll find stuff that you think you would never notice. That's why we're so nitpicky. Well, I don't know what's happening. Are they happy well, or are they screaming? This guy's about to eat this person here. Oh, yeah. Pretty much. No, I, I think they're that. happy, but... I'm just bothered by... It. He definitely looks like he's about to either shoot flames or eat somebody. I like it because it, right away I was like, what? <clears throat> no. I like it. Yeah, I like it too. I'm just going to brighten it up a little, just a hair. Okay. But I, I think you captured a great moment. This looks like street photography to me, so it's candid <laughs> and genuine emotions. Nice moment. I, I can't think of anything else to add. Everything's, everything's good That's about great. it. I love the tight composition. Oh now, this photo has. A mood. And it's got storytelling, too. Put it in black and white. What are you talking about? You got this brilliant blue and red. Nonetheless, I'm compelled. Uh, you know, that's not bad. Black and white. We already know we gotta, what flag it is, and it's just bringing up the form in the picture. And the picture's so moody. Go back to color. All right, first... We just got to adjust the contrast here, so the colors here, so there's some contrast in it, but color. Maybe it's because the color is a little oversaturated, so I'd also consider going back to color 
and then mellowing the colors a bit because they're just so bright. They're like very primary. They almost feel kiddish to me. Yeah, see that? Yeah, you're they right. Maybe more something serious in the serious tone. Like everybody knows what color the American flag is, so you don't need it really shouting at you. Um, the having the subject centered here is bothering me a little bit too. It just it's more unbalanced. Space to the left, right? I was what? thinking the same thing. More negative space to the left? Yeah. What were you going to do? Crop it somewhere? Yeah, I was just going to fill the frame a little bit more with the subject. Mm, I don't like it. He's looking into nothing. It it feels really trapped to me. Really? Better here or better here? It's interesting, that composition, but I don't know. I think I'd be more inclined to put more negative space in front of him. Hmm. Chelsea actually wants more black over here, and this person like pushed into the right third, I think. Yeah. But I have to say, if you're if you're thinking about the message of the po of the photo, that'd make him smaller in the picture, which would make him look more like less dominant. And I think you want him to look powerful. So maybe you're right to crop it tighter and make him bigger. Yeah, I suppose it depends on how the picture is being used and printed too. It's really cool though. I like that they use the flag as like a cape. It kind of is like saying something. It's very symbolic. Like he's like our hero. Yeah, and and you know what? I just appreciate that they put some thought into it. Uh, you know, they set up a looks like they set up a backdrop or maybe they just used a powerful flash to get the black background but That's background cool. but they also set up the the flag and he's got his outfit on he's got a pose and everything so i appreciate the thought you put into it, it looks great it's a uniform not an outfit <laughs> 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 i like the idea of him not even being in the army he's like guys a costume i went and got my costume love your checkered costume <laughs> <laughs> Camouflage is weird now, right? Can we go back to that real quick? I suppose. What's up with that? Why is it like digitized? You know, it's got, like pixels. I've always wondered that too, and I don't know. I, I just assumed that somebody did a study and like pixels are harder to see, but I don't know if he's like hiding in Super Mario Land or what. I don't know. What <laughs> <laughs> I know people take camouflage patterns very, very serious. I, I just don't know. We shouldn't go there. Well, didn't you just wait for the right moment? I wonder if this is the same train person as last time. I was just thinking that that guy who put up like five photos. Train well, guy? it's okay if he just put up one photo, but I don't, I don't think I recognize his style. Plus, it seems like different terrain. But this is a, a really pretty kind of fall New England shot. Yeah. Um, really I like nice. It. I love the trees. I really like it. I look yeah. at it and I'm like, that's a cool picture. Then when I further inspect it, I feel like, ooh, what going on? There's rocks, there's a bridge, there's a train. But I think it kind of works, too. Look at that black cloud, that's cool. Yeah, and I, I want to point out it's got a focal point, because oh, yeah. the trees and the bridge oh. here, they could have just taken a shot without the train here, and it would have been super boring. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um... But they waited for the train. The train wasn't like sitting there when they stumbled across it. No, they set up their camera and the train came through, chug and smoke out, and they timed it perfectly. They probably took a bunch of shots and picked the best one. This picture took some effort, and I really appreciate that. So thank you. Um, oh yeah, I made it properly. <laughs> yeah, I don't. Right there. Right there, you think? I'm just get a little of the rocks out of the way. Yeah, that you know the. The river is nice and it kind of explains the bridge, but at the same time, that might be just like one element too many in this yeah, picture. Yeah, just need to be simplified a little bit, and I think that that did it. Yeah, yeah, I think that's good. Um, I kind of want to up the contrast or something. Yeah, I wish people would do a video on my pictures. <laughs> yeah, why does nobody critique our yeah, pictures? Nobody, well, you know why. We because you're mean and no, people would be mean to you. People critique our pictures on photos. It was like the angsty person in the group. <laughs> where like a week prior, we'd been like, crap it. And then like the next week, you're like, you guys aren't so great. <laughs> you know, but that doesn't count. What's <laughs> this, little fella? Um, nobody knows. It could be a, a dragonfly or. It might be a labradoodle. Yeah. <laughs> So this is a, a really beautiful scene. This flower, this rose has like 
water on it. I almost wonder if they set this up, if they put the grasshopper on the rose specifically, because otherwise it might just be too perfect. But either way, it turned out just lovely. Um, I'll just say that they misfocused just a little bit. And with these macro shots, this is always the way. Nine out of 10 shots that I take turn out this way too. I just take 20, 50, 100 shots and I pick the one that's in focus. So take lots of pictures and delete most of them. You do take a lot of pictures. Yeah, well, you have to with these macro things. You need to take one picture and that's perfect. (laughs) So, refer to chapter 12. Specifically, I have a video in chapter 12 where I'm showing the way I lean my body in and out. So you kind of lean your body in and out, just like the distance from here to here. Just like however many, one millimeter or something. And because your camera's focusing system is not going to keep up with your body movements and the movement of the wind and the flower and everything. You just have to keep shooting. I have a little bit more criticism on that picture. Okay, I'll back up. Go for it. Um, I felt like the brightness of the flower was fighting with the subject of the photo a bit. Yeah, you know, you're right. A little oversight. I wonder if there might just be too much flower in there. Because we can pare it down a little bit. And it's cool that his antenna is long, but I don't think we need to keep his whole antenna in there. So what do you think? Better here or better here? I like that there there's better because the composition is better, I think. Yeah, and you're filling more of the frame with the subject. Mm. Though now that I look at it up close, what's up with this this edge? You got something like the green background creeping into the flower. A little odd. What's this? Uh, mausoleums, looks like. Okay, well. Um, I'll, I'll say that cemeteries of any kind, they're popular subjects, but they're also really difficult to photograph. Cool. Um, I like the line here. Yes, yeah, there's a pattern with the different crucifixes. You know what really and they kind of lead your of eye form. to this uh, statue. I'm sorry, what? You know what really accentuates lines and form? What? <laughs> this one could work in black and white. Uh, so, well... Hang on, we gotta do something with the blue sky here. We gotta make it a little more intense. Yeah, I think you blew it, Charles. Huh? I blew it? Don't you think that worked better in color? I don't know. Do I know this one now? There's a lot going on. Well, anyway, I appreciate this repetition and this line and the fact that it draws your eye right here. You know, I'm thinking about just pulling just... Yeah, in fact, I bet a lot of Manuel Gonzalez's are dead. Maybe just a touch of crop to bring you in a little closer to the subject. cut out the whole angel. Hmm. I'm willing to give that a try. Sounds a little blasphemous. I'm a rebel. We almost got it. I was going to get rid of this guy. Cut the angel out. All right, you be the judge. I liked it with the angel. I liked that it was leading it to it. Angel, schmangel. I'm generally right, so. Yeah. Sure. So the exposure here looks perfect. It's a sunset, (laughs) but it's got some silhouettes here. It's got a reflection. Uh, I wish there was something here in the foreground to add some depth to it, but... A drowning kid. (laughs) Just kidding. That's wrong. I'm glad you said... that. There's just one person talking besides me. She's the one who said it and then said it was wrong. Just for people listening... (laughs) Tony told me to say that before the video. And I felt like it would be wrong. She's lying. Um, I, this seems like they nailed this photo. I, I can't think of anything else to add. It'd be nice if there were some other interest in the foreground, but I don't know that that was possible. It would have been black anyway, since you wouldn't have had any light on it. So good. What's wrong with black? Oh, I didn't go on there. this needs a bow tie. How bad does that thing need a bow tie? <laughs> Pretty bad. I think that's what you want to say. Then. Um, I think you made the right choice here, showing the whole subject. 
So, what do you think? Can we just get focused down a little bit more? You know what? I would focus more on his face because his body, he's pear-shaped. You're going to give everybody uh, <laughs> body issues. <laughs> oh, man. I guess, you know what? I've got to say what's on my own mind. These things are not that cute up close. Look at his little monster hands. He's got a weird bald spot. <laughs> yeah, his hands are kind of monstrous. And... It's not the photographer's fault. But no, you, you know, just... I think he's actually focused on his <clears throat> right paw and his bald spot and not his face. <laughs> Look at it. See? His nose, I think his nose is moving. I think he's got enough depth of field I to get everything in focus here. This, little creature. this fur is in focus. Chelsea's drinking wine tonight. Would you like some of this? <laughs> I don't think that whiskey is going to make the situation better. <laughs> well, nicely done on that shot. I thought it turned out nicely. Um, this is a very cool shot. Um, gosh, my eyes go right to this dog here. Oh, yeah, just and I just love the scene. Beautiful picture. Yeah, it really is. I like that a lot. Though, my all my attention is right here, and none of this is really factoring into it. So I feel like maybe I want to crop just way in. And I appreciate that this might not have been something you could have done at the time of composition. Maybe you didn't have a big enough zoom lens. Maybe you couldn't have just moved closer. Um, but I feel like this is where all the action is, don't you think? Yeah. It's so much fun. Somebody's reading. Everybody's reading. I'm just adjusting the contrast a little bit. Um, <laughs> it was the wrong choice, did you say? Yeah, I was wrong. I disagree with you. Yeah, it was just something I was trying. It's so beautiful. Yeah, I'll, I'll agree. It worked better in the color. Yeah, so I guess my only suggestion here is to crop down a little bit. I'm even tempted to crop closer because there's like this whole left side here doesn't seem to be doing much, but um, this well, dog is really important. This picture, is a, it tells a story because if this were just a picture without a story, you'd say that the background were too cluttered, but you look around the picture and you feel more like you're part of the scene. You know, it's, it's a documentary. You're seeing a lifestyle. Yeah. I guess I'm saying there are different standards for a photo like this. Yeah, this is a picture I can study quite a bit. I love this kid back here. He's doing something and okay. he looks like a dad reading to his daughter. Beautiful shot. Great moment. Okay. That picture's cool. Is, is there really fog or is this just like done in Photoshop? Something <laughs> very surreal about it, right? Well, yeah, but I think it's the Golden Gate Bridge, right? Or no? Mm, I, think I think it's um, just a bridge. Okay, Chelsea thinks it's a bridge. <laughs> um, I don't. Know. I'm not confident because many bridges we'll look alike. But a bit. let's go to that contrast and see what happens. Because there, I feel like there are really deep blacks in it. Yeah, I was just adjusting the blacks. Let's see. There's one little spot of red in it as well. What? Zoom in. Oh my goodness, this is a color photo? No, it's not. Oh, wrong way. Why'd you do that? Um, I think that they... Trying to zoom past one to one. Oh boy, I'm, I'm blown up. a lot of noise. No, that's not what I want. Come on. Tony, get a hold of yourself. See, we need to get all those reds out. Just get rid of those. Well, now I'm trying to figure out if... I think they did spot color. It must be spot color or something, right? And they know how I feel about spot color. <laughs> so we're just going to go full black and white. That looks good. Let's see. Did yeah. we do anything useful here? Yeah, we did. For see, the contrast, it looks way better by right? contrast. Yeah, I'll agree with that. Just a little so more contrast. I love that picture. Did I do too. Roth? I know this is Deneen's picture because she's my BFF on Facebook. <laughs> <laughs> and seeing this thing around. And Deneen, I love your still lives. I think they're really great. Yeah, I love the still life too. And yeah, she does seem to specialize yeah, in still lives. Oh, nice. I bet her house is decorated nicely because she has this burlap and all these gourds. 
I just want to up the exposure. Oh, yeah. Don't you think? Yeah. It kind of comes to life a little bit. That looks good. Can I? What do you think? Before? After? I like it. I think that's good. I want to clarify, I don't want it in black and white, but I want to see it in black and white because I'm like, kind of screwed up like that. So, make that happen. Just gonna finish. I like it in black and white. Look at all the texture of that burlap. Just feel like I could touch it. But I like it in color too. Yeah, I like it both ways too. See? I know you like it both ways. I heard that about you. I don't know what that means. <laughs> Just means you like it in color and black and white, that's all. I don't know what else it would mean. I think I prefer it in black and white. I think better here. What? Someone on our stunners page made here. fun of me because I'm like a black and white junkie. And I totally understand. I'm going through with that, guys. I've been doing a lot of shooting and film and I've been developing only in black and white. And now it's kind of what's going on. Well, um, this is crazy. This is a, a bald eagle that's been used as a crisp, Christmas ornament. And that's something I don't agree with. Well, also, I don't like that it's, they've taken its head off. I think it's a little rude. Yeah, so and please don't eagle. decapitate bald eagles and use them as ornaments. <clears throat> um, so, so I'm going way too far. Wow, look at how sparkly. Yeah, it, is it's... Is this bald eagle a stripper? Because it's wearing a lot of glitter. <laughs> you notice that? There are a lot of beautiful things about this photo. I just love the, the glitters. I don't even know what's going on. I don't know I if they... it has raindrops on it. And it's in a Christmas tree. Um, so I'm just going to crop it down a little more because obviously the subject is the head and we might as well zero in on the head. Are you tempted? But the exposure is just perfect. Am I tempted to what? Nothing. What are we doing? I'm just going to raise the shadows a little bit so we can see a little more Sorry. detail down here. You know, you always have to post-process these pictures because when you take it, either you're going to blow out the highlights and the feathers are going to lose the shadow detail so you have to make sure you save all the highlights and then just I'm raise so the shadows of post. This picture. Yeah well well, me too and it is kind of a mystery and <laughs> I feel like something illegal is happening. <laughs> <laughs> well I'm just freaked out because like damn. So this is the before and this is the after. The eagle the shadows. Yeah, you got it. Now we can see some feather detail. We can differentiate between the eagle and the tree before they all just kind of blend together. Mm -hmm. That eagle picture was cool, right? Remember that? <laughs> Nobody remembers that. <laughs> this is a, a beautiful scene. Mm -hmm. God rays caused by bright light contrasted against a dark background, some sort of humidity or something in the air to further light to reflect off of. I feel like um, there should be an inspirational quote over this picture. What would the quote be, Chelsea? You miss 100% of the shots you never take. <laughs> something like that. Yeah, just some, some obvious statistical fact. <laughs> yeah, but it's inspirational. I like this picture. Yeah. I, I can't think of anything I would do to this. The composition is really nice. You've got a monkey. And then, mm -hmm. what a super cool picture. I don't know who you are, but I love this. The white is properly exposed. God damn. <laughs> well, you're right that the exposure is good, but what I love about this shot is that it's um, blending symmetry and asymmetry. Yeah. So the composition here has these two symmetrical windows, but this one's just covered in blinds, and this one actually shows the flag. It's yeah, it's I'm so impressed by crazy this beautiful. Um, let's put our watermark on it. It's <laughs> see, let's steal this. Let's steal it. It's ours now. Um, fantastic shot. I'm just appreciating it at this point. I have nothing else to contribute, no, but I love the I love the it. basic colors. It's um, so different too. Nice and square. Yeah, I. I I'd hang a print of this. I like this Damn. a lot. It's, it's gorgeous. I'd be really proud yeah. of this. I don't know your name, but you should comment down below and be like, what's up? You love my picture. I hope they're in our readers group. Oh, they are, right? 
I'm proud of them. All these people have purchased stunning digital photography. How <laughs> else would they develop these skills? Handsome son of a gun. Well, this handsome son of a gun wore the wrong shirt. He did. <laughs> this shirt's well, this. No, no, he his shirt looks good on him, but it's not appropriate for a photo shoot. Well, that's what I'm saying. This is his favorite shirt, and all the ladies telling me super handsome well, when he, he wears this shirt. Look but at that. yeah, man, that guy's got a smile. I know he's cute. He's a handsome oh, devil. <laughs> no. Um, but as a photographer, you kind of prep your subjects as far as what they wear. And what you tell them to wear are like plain, solid Nothing. colors. Just as into that kind of photography. <clears throat> and um, these patterns here are just too complex, and it just becomes too distracting. And you can hardly see this man's handsome, handsome face. I can see it. And also... I, is it just me? Is it just the stock photography background that just makes me hate logos and stuff? Oh, I'm not a logo girl. Yeah, but uh, honestly, that's pretty easy to clone out. I didn't do a clean job no, on that there. I just did a quick video. job. But um, So let's get him in a plain shirt or just out of his shirt, as Chelsea wants. <laughs> <laughs> I'll clone out any logos. Um, but otherwise, you know, the lighting is great. He's in the shadow. He's got just a little catch light. Um, the focus is good on the eyes, which can be difficult with glasses. Yeah, they did uh, a great job. Got just a killer smile and a this nice so five cute. o'clock shadow. They won. Oh, I know what this is. Um, is this Golden Gate Bridge? Ha <laughs> <laughs> Check you. That's a great picture. Like uh, that. it's... The opera house in where I Sydney? I wonder who took this picture. <laughs> just kidding. I'm just making fun of your watermark. Just yeah, kidding. that's quite a watermark. I mean, we know. And it's like in 3D. It's, it's got like multiple dimensions to it. Sam, I think you, you should know, just move it to a corner. I think a crop would improve this picture. We should just... All right, now we're busted on Sam. <laughs> Sam, we're kind of jerks. I'm sorry. I'm sorry I didn't send it that far. I like this picture, though. Like, could you please... No? <laughs> you know what, though? The reflections are really nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Could you I think this it? is the focal point of the you... picture. This is immediately where my eye went. Come on. But look, it, the exposure is great. And you know what I can tell is that he did a long exposure. And the little ISO. Can we see the data on this? It's a... I, I wish we could. I I have the metadata turned on, but sometimes it shows up oh, and sometimes well, it doesn't. And it now just... it's pop up and then go away? Yeah, but it's just showing oh. the file name and the dimensions, so who cares about that? My only gripe is that there's like a some ugly building on the right. Yeah, and then there's just kind of like black negative space. I mean, with with night photos like this, I think what you want to be in a blue that hour. On the right. Well, I hate to lose the watermark, but I do think this works better. But as, as I was going to say, it's a little late like, at that's night. That's too tight. And that's too tight of a crop. So if you shot earlier in the night, then you'd get some more um, color in the sky. You could get some blue light. color in the sky. Uh, a little bit. Yeah, I like that. And I feel like it's a little close to the top here. I yeah. might have... They could use a little more space, but they could always make more sky, too. Yeah, I'm just trying to bring out a little more detail in the sky. See, there's some nice clouds and stuff in the sky, and, and you'd see more of that if you were to shoot a little earlier in the night. You know, a good time to shoot... Night photography is right after the sun sets because you're still getting some natural light, but you're also getting stars. You don't want to shoot too late. It can be too dark. But I think they did a great job. I like this picture, Sam. And you know what? I want to go to Australia, but nobody invited me. Well, see, now we have metadata. I don't know why it wasn't popping up before. It's your fault. Um, so it's like GBH, the great blue heron with a little bitty fish. Super cute shot. Great shot. Um, we see a lot of great blue heron pictures, and most of the time they're just standing in the water. You know Because what? this shot takes a lot of patience. They grab these things, and then they swallow them like a second later. What are you going to say, hon? Oh, someone took a picture of a crazy-necked bird last week, and they told us in the comments that it has that little, that little crook in its neck because it keeps its wallet in there. Okay. Good little bit of <laughs> trivia there. Thanks for that. Please don't put that on your homework, kids. Um, so this is a great shot, and I'm actually shocked that it turned out at 1 80th of a second because 
Um, so that's a really slow shutter speed, and usually they grab these things and then immediately swallow them. I don't know. Well, what lens did they have? <laughs> I just was rolled away. Which lens? I have to cut you have? off. You're uh, they're at three hundred millimeters. Oh my gosh! How'd they get one eightieth of a second out with three hundred millimeters? Uh, well, I don't I, know who this is, but his new name is Steady Hand McGee. <laughs> um, I don't know. What is the Pentax K10D? Is that a mirrorless camera? Nobody knows. Don't Google it. Let's move on. All right. You're right. But anyway, the shot turned out great. I cropped it down just a little bit. Um, but otherwise, your exposure is perfect. You know, I might pull the highlights down a little bit and see if we could pull a little detail out of here. But otherwise, I think it's a great shot. Festive. This gorgeous shot. Beautiful. Yeah. It reminds just me of beautiful. that um, movie, What Dreams May Come. It was like about heaven or something. I don't know. It looks like heaven. Is that a glacier pouring down from the mountaintop? Where is it? Is this Glacier National Park, do you think? Um, beautiful. Um, yeah, I'm not sure. Definitely looks like I the Rocky Mountains, there, but I don't know exactly where. I, I would like to go there, too. I wish people would buy more books so we could, so we could like, <laughs> not work for one second and go there. These people have already bought the book. So you need to say, I wish people would buy some of our DVDs and T-shirts buy, like, so that we could go visit this place. I just want to go somewhere. That is so pretty. Yeah, this is a beautiful shot. I, I feel like I want to increase the contrast just a little bit. It's making me emotional. It's so pretty. Don't you mess with this picture, Tony. No? No. Better here? Why mess with the Better here. I just, there, there was very little I can do. This is a beautiful shot. It's it took a lot of color. planning. He got the colors, you know, he got the sunlight just right. The sunlight is clearly, the sun is either rising or setting. Um, you know, I, I don't see any noise in the sky, really. Uh, perfectly down, there's just nothing I can really complain about in here. So beautiful. So thank you. Thank you for that. That was a nice treat. Look at this fella. Hey, Paul Crane. We haven't met before, but I'm Chelsea. You're Paul Crane. So this composition follows the rules of thirds, but it's kind of violating the rule of space in that he's facing off the edge of the frame, and sometimes that works, often that works, but here it just kind of, it feels unbalanced to me, don't you think? Um, but also, he's taking up such a small portion of the frame, I really think I want to just pull this just way in. Mm. Mm. Yeah, but now it's not clear. <clears throat> Well, so a lot of times when I crop, I'm not suggesting that you actually crop the picture. I'm trying to suggest a compositional technique. Like, it's it's always better to do your cropping in camera. You get closer to the subject, you zoom in a little bit. <laughs> well, it's, all right. It does, um, that crop accentuates the shape of the pole, which is interesting. So I can see it both ways. Good job, Paul. Better here? I like when you say better here, better here. Or better here. I like the original. I like the after. I like them both. I'm a person that likes Wishy them. Wishy-washy. I'm a flip-flopper. This is a moody picture. You know what one thing I noticed right away, and this happens to me, and I, and I always regret when it happens. The boob is pulling my shirt pretty thin. Yeah, so... When you're just looking at the person, this won't be obvious. But then you had this hard front lighting, and yeah, it will just reflect right through I'm somebody's sure. shirt. I've had this problem. You need to be very careful. <clears throat> so, I don't know. Maybe bring up the shadow so that it's like you can see the rest of the shirt. Or maybe you right. Oh. I, I, I'm sorry about that. I was. <laughs> you are such a. Specifically trying to drop the. Okay, here. It's, why is that not getting darker? This poor woman. All right, well, I'm really... I apologize for this whole segment. <laughs> uh, <laughs> it's a nice picture. Let's ignore that for a moment and... Her mood seems... Her expression seems really serious. I like it. It seems like she's in a one-man band. A grunge band. Um, but I like the crop and the lighting is nice. I would. Hmm. I guess we've learned to just be careful about the how the flash can change things. 
can can significantly change the lighting, especially with kind of porous materials. That's a cool picture. Oh, look at this GBH. I like his tiny mohawk. It's nice and sharp. Yeah. Um, this photographer definitely got close. You can even see <laughs> this is outrageously cross. close. Uh, I'm, yeah, they're using the 400 F5.6 with the 5D Mark III. That's a combination I definitely like and recommend. This is an unconventional crop, and I appreciate it. Yeah. Yeah, I'm okay with that. I'm okay with it. I'm more than okay with it. Um, I will say the other GBH picture had a fish. And having that one extra element, that action, that storytelling definitely adds a lot. But here, this guy wins as far as like detail goes. This He's guy's got, got a lot of detail. Cool hair and stuff. So maybe instead of a fish, like a cigarette. <clears throat> Think it over. And I don't know what was going on, but um, if the bird is still like this, you can drop that shutter speed down. Um, even with the 400 millimeter, you could be at one four hundredth of a second and then ISO yeah. 200. And that would just let you reduce the Remember, a little bit. Yeah, the reciprocal rule: if you're at eight, if you're at four hundred millimeters, you could go one four hundredth and not get any camera shake. Yeah. So just remember that. Oh, this is a multiplicity shot. Yeah, my first shot. My first thought was this is just a picture of some kids playing poker or go fish or something. <laughs> I guess you don't hand cards to each other in poker. But this is definitely a multiplicity shot, or this person had quadruplets and they bought four of the same outfit. But it, it's flawlessly done. I, I don't see any problems with the blending here. Really nice editing on this and nice bit of storytelling too. Yeah. Are you muting it? I just muted it while I cleared my throat. So I apologize for that. I, I didn't have anything to add to that Whoa. picture, did you? No. Tony. There's another Tony, and he's moving on up. <laughs> There's a little something weird on the beak. But I like the sharpness. I like that you can see the little feathers on his beak. Yeah, as I recall, the, he named this photo uh, Praise I View, something along those lines. Like, oh this, is what this is what the, fish the mouse would see. Uh, <laughs> Cool. Um, nice focus, nice and close. Um, there's a little chromatic aberration around yes. here, which could be adjusted in post. I think maybe they pulled the the blues down a little bit. I don't know, maybe not. It looks good. Sometimes I like this picture. Yeah, it's interesting. It's tight. It's compelling. Yeah. I don't know. There's not much else you can do with it. It's good. This picture Aww. is adorable. A goose and a little so gosling. Literally a mother goose. <laughs> oh, that this shot's so perfect. Cute. Yeah, this is adorable. That's really cute. Maybe a little hot. Let's bring down the highlights. Yeah, maybe. There you go. And you can see the little butter droplets and it's good. Yeah, it didn't need much. I don't, I don't know that it even needs that, but that's a really, really cute shot. Yeah, I love that. The mother seems to be protecting the baby. Juice. So this is a nice bit of composition. They they added a couple of elements here. They could have just taken a picture of the building in the background. Excuse me. Um, but I like that they put the line in the foreground and they used a kind of nice wide angle lens to kind of exaggerate the depth in the picture. Yeah, it's a nice picture. I like it. I have no criticism. 16 millimeters, that's a super wide angle lens, in fact. Um, plenty of depth of field to get everything focused. Really nicely done. Well, Clem. Have some um, seltzer water. That helps. Mr. Buck. Not an option. Uh, so we were accidentally zoomed in here and I immediately saw that the just missed focus here. It's yeah. it's back focus. It's so hard. He must have had his aperture really low. Yeah, th there is always shallow depth of field in working in macro and yeah. just like I was saying before, you just gotta take a lot of shots. You gotta keep refocusing and moving your body and you know, for a shot like this you wanna take twenty, thirty shots and then just pick the one that's most in focus because if you just take one shot, it's gonna probably be out of focus. If you got it in focus, it's not 
owing to your credit to your ability as a photographer, it's just owing to luck. <laughs> because no matter how good you are, most of your up close macro shots are going to be out of focus. Um, could be a little brighter too. Just by looking at the histogram, I can see, you know, the the subject itself is pretty dark. So I'm just going to bring the whole thing up a little bit. But the crop is good. Oh, this shot is really cute. cute. Great storytelling here. Oh, I love them. Clearly, we know he grabbed a bunch of sand and threw it, and the sand is just in the air. And he's just happy as can be about it. He's just having a great time at the beach. Oh, my goodness. He is a mess. He's covered in mud. <laughs> Look at that. I love this picture. That this is picture, really cute. I no criticism. It's great. Yeah, I love it. Like The contrast and everything is just perfect. Great composition. Yeah. Nicely done. Perfect. Perfect shot. And this picture is interesting because I, I like the depth of field that the fog creates. You can see some depth in the picture. Yeah, there's a lot of haze in the sky and it does add just a I'd lot of depth. It's really nice. It's missing a focal point. I don't know what that is. I want to get rid of that. Um, so, something. Yeah, I'm with you on that. It needs like a sailboat here. There's just some, you know... Or like the sun over here, or it just needs a place for your eyes to rest because I keep searching the photo and it's a nice photo. It's just that I need somewhere for my eyes to settle and say this is what the photo is about. Yeah. So Chelsea and I have been out and we've been in scenes like this where it's like a beautiful scene and your eye sees it. And what we'll do is we'll just spend half an hour just walking around, just like looking for that focal point. Or hoping that a sailboat goes past or something. And sometimes we'll even come back and revisit the spot later. Because we'll be like, this is a gorgeous spot. We just need something to happen. Yeah. That happens. The moon. This is the moon. Um, a little hot. A little overexposed. You can see this is a little burnt out. I don't have the raw file. But if it is raw, you could probably recover it. But you can see that that, that part is just flat. It's not ever going to come back. So that the moon can easily become overexposed, especially with just a 300 millimeter lens um, on a crop body. It's a little bit longer, but even so, it becomes overexposed because most of the sky is black. So if you're using automatic exposure, you usually have to dial in a couple of uh, negative two or negative three stops yeah. exposure compensation to expose it correctly. Compensation, because <clears throat> your camera always meters for a middle gray, so it takes everything in your picture, the brightest part, the darkest part, the middle part, and it kind of mixes it together and tries to find middle gray. And if you have a ton of black and a ton of white in your picture, it's going to miss the exposure. So you've got to, you have to be smarter than your camera and you have to figure that out. If you have something really bright on a dark background, you've got to meter it yourself. It's not going to work out. Yeah. And this is way cropped down, but this was an almost entire, the, the entire frame was black. Plus, like, a little spot of the white moon in the middle. Yeah. It's so nice picture. But it's nice and sharp. The settings are overall good. Just a little overexposed. I I really just want to immediately pull the saturation down on this. Yeah, that was my first impression. It just feels a little It's so hard. I've been in this situation before where you love the color and you bump it up a little and you bump it up a little bit more before you know it. You're left with something really overly saturated. So... Just, and sometimes you're just trying to recreate what you saw. That's true. That does happen. Like you're like, no, the colors were brighter than that. <laughs> yeah. Um, it's but pretty. yeah, I, this is a beautiful scene. I love the symmetry here. Uh, they used a tripod, which is nice. They they shot at half a second. Cool. Yeah. Yeah, it's a really nice shot. Besides maybe just dialing back the saturation a little bit, I think it's a nice composition. Um, these rocks kind of form the focal point. And I thought they were the focal point, too. Yeah, that, that's nice. But, you know, with a landscape shot like this, what do you think? Even just cropping it down a little bit and uh, unlock this. Maybe just going into a panorama and going for symmetry. I don't know, I'm struggling with this in the picture too. There are multiple focal points. I'm looking at the rocks and that's really interesting because they're underwater. But I'm also drawn to this bright V of trees. It's like a mm -hmm. v, so it kind of draws your eyes to the center. And um, 
Yeah, I think going with symmetry might be your best bet. You know, I'm also not sure about this. No, I keep paring it down. I'm like, hmm. tell you what, let's. What about that? Now we've got like symmetry, symmetry and the rule of thirds. Yeah. Like so that. let's do the before and after. Better here or better here? Um, it's up to you as the viewer to judge. Yeah, you judge yourself. <laughs> You're just here to offer suggestions. This is interesting. I like the intense makeup. Yeah, and, and here they're following the rule of thirds, but they're violating the rule of space because their shoulders are facing off this right side, but I think it works perfectly because the shot is so compelling. Um, and I definitely encourage you to break the rules, and this this it works in this shot. I don't feel like it worked in the fisherman shot, but I feel like it works here. Um, the focus is perfect. It's Can you try black and white for Nice me? and shot, sharp. Because there are just so many colors that I my really? attention. Oh, I just love the colors. The background doesn't compete well, at all. I could be wrong. <clears throat> it's to try. All right, so as soon as we go into black and white, it immediately seems underexposed because we don't have the bright colors fighting with it. Um, so, hmm. I don't know. What do you think? It depends if, it, if the picture was more about form or color for you. And... I think I like the colors just because they're so funky and unconventional. Yeah, I, I don't I don't feel like this shot needs anything. I love it just as it is. I think it's a great shot. Cool. Maybe you could have dropped down to a ISO 200, one or another for a second. I remember seeing this picture somewhere, and I liked it. Yeah, I like this too. I think um, my only question <clears throat> would be that the first swing that we see should be the one in focus. Yeah, you make a good point. And for some reason, I want to feel it. I, I want to see it a little closer to the edge. Don't you think? Um, also, just these people in the background, they're just kind of competing for my attention. I don't know. Oh, I didn't notice them. Well, they're bugging me. Well... A terrible choice, like that. So, what do you think? Better here, or better here? Uh, I like both. But I, I love the reds here. I love the patterns. Yeah, I like it. It's fun. Oh, kids, they can use that swing. It's really muddy. Oh, that's an interesting spider. Yeah. That's a good shot. Um, yeah, it looks good. I, I wonder if they even had a uh, extension tube stacked on there, if this is just taken without extension tubes. Yeah, I like um, the composition. And it's nice and clear. I love that they make the web stand out, which is hard to do. <coughs> yeah, they've, they've got... Th the sun to their back or, yeah, the or to the right. The if the sun were from the other side, then the web would just disappear. You literally wouldn't see the web and the sky would be all in shadow. Um, so the lighting is nice. The focus is just perfect and sharp. You can see all the details in the spider. Um, you know, I, I almost wonder if they could have just gotten closer. Uh, deciding which way I'd want to crop it. Well, they're at 360 millimeters, right? Yeah, I'm not saying they need to use a longer lens, but maybe stack on some more extension tubes. Um, I don't know. What do you think about that crop? I like that crop. Usually with subjects like this, so much of it is about the detail. But I, I feel like this is overall really nice. Um, maybe could have... Yeah, it, I mean, macro is really hard. I wouldn't mind seeing more depth of field here. But if you use more depth of field, then you'd have to raise your s-stop number, you'd have to raise your ISO to get a decent shutter speed out of it to freeze the movement of the wind and such. Anyway, I think it's nicely done. I made a little tweak there to crop a little tighter, which what is something about, I do for like, almost everything else. Contrast to raise the contrast. That's funny, yeah. I was just making some contrast adjustments. Just to bring up the web a little bit more. Yeah. Hmm. I don't know. That kinda No. Because the web leads to the too spider much? and now the spider is a little bit the contrast is a bit high. Is it better here? I think it benefits oh, from the contrast. Like the contrast. What about... Here's the original shot. What about Here's bringing the up the highlights of the white? Oh, excuse me. 
bringing up the highlights? Well, to bring up the web. I like the web. Mm, I don't know that I can easily do that. Because mm. it's, they're like mid-tones. Oh. Uh, mm. But I do like the picture. Yeah. Like the picture. Yeah. Nice shot. Nicely done. Nicely done. This picture's interesting. I it, I feel like it needs a focal point. My eye is just searching around for something and but it doesn't nice. rest anywhere. It is nice. It just needs a focal point. Yeah, it's a beautiful spot. I can see you had a nice long shutter speed because the water is mm. nice and feathery. Nice picture. You just need plus one, just something else. Now this shot has plenty going on. <laughs> well, I always forget the word for these. What are these called? Shinto? Shinto? I don't know. I think it might be called... Oh, oh no, a Tory was a, gate. A Tory gate, right. A Tory gate. Um, sorry, let's They're zoom beautiful. in. Get in there. Okay. Um, beautiful shot. I, I don't like this negative space on the right. And since it's a panorama anyway, I'm just going to go ahead and pull it in. And I think it can come in over here, too. We don't need to see all that. So I'm just... Pulling a little bit more around the subject itself. Uh, what a beautiful moment. Yeah, it's really beautiful. Gosh, what can we do to increase the shadows, maybe? It, it actually feels undersaturated to me, don't you think? Like, don't you want to see more of the Tory Gate? Is it just because it's, I think it's just all backlit? Well, yeah, so you can't really bring up the color and have it look good. So you, so you might just want to bring down the saturation and are you saying go to black and white you know what <laughs> I, I think dropping the contrast is helping <laughs> I wasn't saying that okay so I feel like dropping the contrast helped there though I kind of want to select the background and bring out the blacks more because you get all this smoke in the sky when you do fireworks and it all kind of illuminates and washes out the sky but <laughs> just to humor Chelsea I never I never asked for that. Oh, good, because it, it wasn't a good choice. Well, you're judgmental. <laughs> I'm just here to help. All right, so nicely done. I, I just you know pulled what? it out a little bit more. A, it's just out of focus. It's not very clear. Look at the what? gate. It's not very clear. No, but it's in focus. Um, It's not very clear. It, it's, it's underexposed, because they got this bright light back here and this is completely in do? shadow and as it is what could they do about that could they... and, and in fact here's the original shot it is washed out i i mean what could they do I, could they put on you know i guess what i i would set my camera up on a tripod and take um bracketed shots i take one shot that was well overexposed mm -hmm. so that this would be nice and and exposed and then i would just sit back and take shots that were exposed to the fireworks and maybe blend the multiple exposures together. Yeah. What else could you do? Remember, I, it's not that he didn't do a good job of what he had, but I think when we do, we're doing these reviews, it's like idealistic. Like if you could have had the perfect settings, if you had your tripod on you, if you went to the extreme, how would you get the best shot you could get? And yeah. If you had the foresight to think, oh, the Tory is going to be backlit yeah. and therefore it's going to be underexposed. It's hard. It's hard. We're in a difficult position because you did a great job, but... This is a dynamic range problem that can't be solved with HDR because this is moving back here. But you could take a picture before the fireworks. We're going on and get the story gate nice and well exposed and then just expose for the fireworks and then blend them together. But it's it's hard. I think you did a nice job. I think it's a beautiful shot. I like it. Who's Who's been painting the sheep? This has been a problem. And is that a wolf? Nobody even <laughs> hiding in with the sheep. Maybe a wolf in sheep's clothing. Look at that sheep in the background, like he escaped. Like, hey, cat. Yeah, he's been kicked out. <laughs> what did he do? I don't know. I think this is an interesting picture. Yeah, I like it. You know, whenever you see somebody's eyes in the photo and they're looking off camera, you immediately follow their eyes. So this is a nice composition because you look at her eyes and she's looking down at the sheep. So your eyes kind of just follow this triangle here. And uh, that's really nice about it. I, I can't think of anything to this. I, I like this shot a lot. Um, it's just me. I'm just really bothered by that blue. 
Oh, well, that was not a good choice, but um, I guess we could just take out these blue patches, or maybe the blue is some part of storytelling that I just don't know about. Like, like these are the blue sheep of Kalele or something. I don't even know what you just said, but it sounded wonderful. <laughs> See, it's better without the blue spots, right? I like what they were doing with this. There's <coughs> leading lines going to a cute couple walk on a fall walk. But they're just clutter. There's like telephone poles and it's like... Yeah. It's a lot. You're right. I mean, they don't know these people, so this is candid photography, so they didn't get to plan anything, everything out. But I, I like the off-center composition here. Um, you know, you have some choices in your composition. You could have taken a step left and put it here and gone for symmetry. Um, but I, I like the way it's it's off-center here. It's following the rule of thirds nicely. Chelsea's pointing out that there's just a bunch of distractions here. Um, you know, things like these poles here, you might be able to clean up a little bit. Um, this pole here. This obviously is not going to be a perfect job of editing. I'm doing it really quickly, but. That was my dog standing. Uh, so like better here or better here. Um, I suspect with those subjects removed, this is more what it looked like to your eye. I bet as you were watching this couple walk across this beautiful bridge with these nightfall colors, you weren't thinking, oh, look at these huge street lights and these weird blocks. It's weird how that happens, right? Your brain just takes that out of the picture for you. Yeah, so when you actually take a picture, sometimes you have to kind of make those adjustments for the brain, because when you're looking at a stag shot, these things jump out at you. So you just remove them. You just make the job of the brain a little bit easier. Um, so I think that job helped a lot. The brain. Though, actually, looking at the histogram, maybe it's a bit underexposed. Uh, but when you properly expose it, the whole focus of the picture was, was the bridge. Because it's like glaring metal. Yeah, I think this would be nice if it was made out of, like, hand-carved wood or something, but I can't change that. Come on, Tony. I thought you were a professional. Uh, this is a very nice shot. Um, you know, I think... Here, the, the ducks down here are the focal point, but they're such a small part of the scene, don't you think? I guess I just want the, the ducks to be a bigger yeah, part of the you, overall picture. If you try to crop them, then like, you take out the landscape, you feel. This is a difficult... This is difficult. Yeah, I, I know. And I don't think I'm going to be able to fix this with cropping or editing. Um, but going back to the original picture... Without those ducks, it doesn't have... Like, I'll just take these ducks out. And suddenly we have absolutely no focal point. As we look at it, your eye just rests nowhere. So adding the ducks back in, that's immediately where your eyes go. But it's such a small part of the picture, it gets a little frustrating. So it's hard to say. <laughs> Get down close to the water, throw some bread down, and hope the ducks come closer. Um, anyway, the only... It's a good picture. The only thing we could use more of a prominent subject in it. Aww. Yeah, this is a sweet dog. There's a nice story here. Again, when the eyes are in the picture and they're looking off camera, your eyes follow them. And so we see that he's looking out the window. Um, technically, I think we missed the focus on the eye, just just barely. Um, but it, it's overall pretty good. Um, you could have gone with a higher f-stop number, I think, especially because the background is part of the subject. I um, like the blurry background because they're just these like lights and... You're just imagining there's something there, but you're not distracted by it. Yeah, and I imagine he's, like, waiting for his uh, owners to come home. Dad. Just missing his dad. Aww. Really sweet really picture. Good picture. Yeah, I like that picture a lot. I love this picture. That's so beautiful. Is that the... Is that San Francisco? Oh, you think it might be the tea garden in San Francisco? Mm -hmm. Yeah, my first thought was uh, China. Oh, I, I remember learning that the different architectures that the different areas in Asia have, but I don't remember specifically. And San Francisco does have an awesome tea garden, which looks a lot like this, but I'm not, I'm just I don't not think sure. it is a tea garden, but it's beautiful. I also know that whether this has even or odd number of floors is significant, but I can't remember how. Well, I don't know. Anyway, this, show off. this is a nice shot. Uh, 
I, I, I wish it had interesting lighting or something. The lighting here is very flat and there's no particular subject. Yeah, it's like it's like noon or something because the shadows are right beneath. Look at the bushes. The shadows are right underneath it. Yeah. So and if they'd come earlier in the day or around sunset, then it'd be some nice side lighting that would be interesting. So this is a, a, a great spot and there's nothing wrong with it. Um, but yeah, if morning or, you know, the golden hour would help just tremendously here. And I think I'd love to see somebody just on this bridge. Just okay. one other thing. Cool. Yeah, that was my thought too. This gets cool. Um, it's a little, a little high key for me. Is it? Mm, maybe a little. Hmm. I'm going to go ahead and make the whites white. No, I'm not. That didn't look good. Uh, well, I love the off-center composition. It's got a good expression. Uh, I actually like the way the hair is helping pull the balance back towards the right of the frame. The lighting is really nice. Um, I don't know. I, I like the shot. Yeah. I don't know why Chelsea hates it. <laughs> I'm kidding. Chelsea doesn't Stop hate it. Stop putting stuff in black and white. That's <laughs> what I do. I, I think I actually like that one in black and white. I'm not going to push it on you, but I don't know if the color add anything to it. This is a handsome portrait of a guy. I feel like he's an author for some reason, maybe because he's posed in front of all these books. Well, let's try this one in black and white, because authors always have black and white pictures. Uh, you know, I'm going to go out on a limb, and I'm going to guess that this is a self-portrait. And the reason is I can see that he's slightly out of focus. got a picture here about his Nikon D7000 and a second with a D7000, but um, I think you're also right that the focus is on the books, and that's probably because he focused it before he jumped in front of the frame. <laughs> um, but overall, I think it's a nice picture. I, I could use this pulled a little closer to his head. Um, I'm sorry, what did you say you wanted to see in black and white? Well, because that's what authors do. That makes the focus more him than the books. Yeah. See, because right. the books were nice colors, but they were fighting with him for the attention. But it's also nice in color. Um, let me see. Blue. It might, I think it actually brings out that he's a little out of focus in black and white. Yeah, and I don't want a shirt to be so bright, so I'm just dropping a little bit. Um, I think I like it in color. Yeah, I like it both ways. I like it with just that touch of crop, but nice handsome shot, nice lighting on it too. Cool. We're into that. Whoa. Gotta zoom back. Um, it's a beautiful shot. I love the off-center composition. I love the way her eyes are pulling the balance back towards the right of the picture. Um, I love that earring too. This is a, a really nice shot. Great lighting. What? I'm just kind of looking at the reflection in her eyes to see exactly how she's lit. I don't know what that is that's lighting her. Is that like it's just a big card for Phil or a big white table maybe? Very cool shot. I, I love this shot. I just, I love the balance of it. Um, does it feel overexposed to you, Charles? Yeah. Yeah, I'm just adding a little more contrast into it. I don't know. I think better here, or better here. I don't know. I think the original looked better. It was a style like it was all washed out. Hmm. Okay. Oh, I don't like black and white. Yeah, that's a color photo. Nicely done. Look at these cute babies. Yeah, they're cute. Um, you know, this is actually a common style in stock photography where one subject has direct eye contact and then everybody else is looking off camera. So nice work with your uh, stock models there. <laughs> um, Truthfully, they just had a squeaky baby that happened to get this kid's attention and, and this one just to ADD. <laughs> They're adorable, though. ADD. Um, yeah, it's nice. Very nice exposure. Neil Johnson. Very nice exposure, Neil Johnson. I don't know. I, 
I feel like I wanted to bring the contrast out a little bit. No, I think you're good. Chelsea says we're done. This is not appropriate. Here we're making some additional dragonflies. (laughs) Um, God, I hate to just zoom in on the just reproductive Uh, parts there. It gets a little gratuitous. Family show. Leave it. I'm saying leave it. Yeah, I mean the the crop is nice and tight. It seems to be well done. It's nice and sharp and focused. I don't I don't know what there else there is to add. Um, you probably could have dropped your shutter speed a little bit. One twelve fiftieth is a little fast. Get that ISO down a little bit. Um, but overall, nicely done. Whoa! Uh, that's cool. Yeah, this is a great shot, and I'll tell you why. It's it's these guys here who make it a great shot because otherwise, it's a very nice landscape shot where your eyes don't rest anywhere, but. They add a focal point and they add a story and you can see the cabling that they're using to protect each other from falling off the side of this mountain and you can see where they're going and just a, just a great mountain climbing shot. That's scary. It is scary. Um, oh, I just love this mountain in the distance. Just and perfect exposure too. I wouldn't change a thing about this. Though... Maybe make it a little cooler? What do you think? It was a very warm shot. And with all the snow and ice and stuff, I just want to make it a little cooler. Oh, I liked it a little warm. I agree. I thought I see the original one's a bit too warm, but maybe... Somewhere in between, little, you think? Yeah, just like get that warm feeling back. Yeah. Um, yeah. All right. Something to consider. Maybe you want a little cooler. Sometimes when you have snow out there, you want it to be a little blue. A car or something in the parrot family. He's cute. Uh, I want to pull it a little closer to his head down here. Um, just kind of fill the frame. That's what you want to do with most most wildlife subjects. I like his anklet. It's fancy. Yeah, he's in captivity. Um, but birds are usually pretty happy about that anyway. Uh, nice shot, perfect exposure. Exposed properly for the subject to let the background get overexposed, which is the right thing to do. I, th- I think his feet are more in focus than his face. Let's check that out. To my eye, it all looks nice and sharp and in focus. Yeah. yeah. I when I look at it, I see his feet. Maybe hmm. that's my problem. Maybe it's because the background behind him is it, it's similar colors to his head. Yeah. Yeah. Nice picture. Cute picture. Look at these cuties. They're very cute. Nice expression. She's kind of looking off camera. There's a lot of space over his head there. I kind of want to crop it down a little bit more. We can use a fill light in their eyes. Like a flash would have been good here, just to even out the light and put a catch light in their eyes. Yeah. But I like the pose and the composition. It's a cute picture. Yeah, they have a little raccoon eyes going on there. Just a little touch of fill flash, like minus two TTL would help. Minus two TTL. There we go. Uh, very cute. I like the crop on it, cutting into those curly locks and the exposure is really nice. Yeah, very cute. I'd say the blacks are just a bit underexposed, so let's bump that. Yeah, it feels a little contrasty. There you go. Looks good. Good picture. Nice. That's a pretty picture. Yeah, uh, very nice shot. I, exposure. You know, I feel like the focus is over here, and I want the focus to be here because that's the first place that my eye went. Um, 81 seconds. Yeah, I was looking at that too. At ISO 50. Okay, look how smooth the water is, and there's a boat moving all around in the bottom left hand corner. Oh, yeah. The trees aren't moving though, which is interesting. No wind. Yeah, you're right, the trees turned out nice and sharp. But- it looks like this must have just been at dusk. Um, and I do appreciate the, the long exposure. Um, yeah, interesting shot. And clearly this is all about the light. Like if you take in this in the middle of the day, this would be such a boring shot. But the light here is just gorgeous. Uh, I almost wish we could see a boat or something down here, though. Maybe that would just be too much. 
I, I don't know. I, I can't think of it's anything else to... a little bit to... unbalanced. That's what I think you're saying. Yeah, you know what? That's what it is. So because there's nothing over here. Everything is loaded on the right side it's here, really and then there's right. this, which doesn't quite compete. It's almost like if there... Hmm. I don't know that that's going to fix it. I, I'm just... it. It balances it a little bit more, though. Yeah, I'm going to unlock this. It was a panorama before, and I don't know that it... The, the subject warranted that kind of composition. I don't know. It's hard. It's really hard to just go in and edit it like that, but it's a beautiful picture, just maybe a little bit unbalanced. What are we going to do? That's all we can do. That's all we can do. Look at this jam sash. Yeah, nice this picture. is a cute shot. Good street photography. Cute. Nice settings. <laughs> Yeah, I like his eye contact is leading back here. Oh, That's the subject. Makes us all look at him. <laughs> Great, it's really good. I like the exposure is perfect. <laughs> Nicely done. I, I can't think of anything to add. Anyway. I love this picture. This is so beautiful. This is just postcard perfect. I dare you to say something about this picture, Tony. Um, what's going on up here? Is this Palmer? There's this guy. We had a landscape challenge, and he like would have won every single one except that the role was to only put one picture in the challenges, and he put like a million. Mm, I don't know. And his name was something Palmer, and he his pictures kind of looked like this. They really did. I'm wondering if it's him. Um. So there was something weird up there that I fixed, and it was bothering me. And you know we're I saw that we're like almost perfectly centered here. I just want to really go for symmetry here. Um, you did it. There you go. <laughs> I love that picture. Yeah, I, I love this shot too. Gosh, what a great shot. Really a gorgeous shot. Thank you for taking this. I, I love the way that light is kind of dappled on the mountains mm -hmm. coming through the clouds. Beautiful clouds. And then they have a subject because a lot of people would have taken a picture of just the background, the mountains and the clouds. Right, they beautiful. found a foreground yeah, subject. A foreground yeah, really they nice. I know it. Very nice. A tiny bit underexposed. Yeah, because you see there's stuff on the right side of the histogram here, but it's all the background stuff, and you really have to expose your subject to kind of just ignore the background. So just yeah. dragging that up, just look what a difference that made. Your, yeah. Picture, um, your camera doesn't always meter the way that it should. I think that's what people forget, is that they're smarter than their camera. Yeah, your camera doesn't know what the subject is. It just knows how much light is coming through, and it sees this super reflective background here. And, you know, his fur, his or her fur, is much more absorbent of light than this background, which is all hard stuff. Yeah. Um, I'm kind of bugged that his paws are a little bit cut off. <laughs> Something to be aware of. It's always better to shoot a little wide and then crop later. Um, but nice shot, Ashley. What does his watermark say? A portrait's by, okay. Flower pictures are difficult. Yeah, this is a little, it's got some blown out highlights though. <laughs> yeah, maybe just a little. Um, but you really want to decide what your subject is because your eye will just see all the flowers and it will kind of pick the beautiful details out. But I think the number one problem I see with flower pictures that they're just taking too wide angle and that you really need to zoom right into the flower. Um, and often it really pays to isolate the flower. So you'd even want to like pull these flowers out of the way, the, the flowers in the background that is. And so you can just pick part of the flower. In. And sometimes it's not even a single flower that you want to isolate, but sometimes you want to just zoom right in and just show part of the flower and just fill the frame and let the, the petals of the flower just go off the edge of the frame. Uh, so flower pictures are hard. Um, there's a section on flowers in Chapter 9 of Stunning Digital Photography, so do check that out. That's a little too close for me, but I guess it's a matter of taste. Yeah, you're right. That's not right. but It's not right, but... You hear me. You hear me. You hear him. That's um, interesting. Yeah, I'm going to... Right away, I just want to drop the black so you feel like it was a little washed out. Like this scene needs That's contrast. A cool yeah, like it's a balance. very cool the picture. The background element is balanced with the foreground girl. Yeah, it's cool. For some reason, just with the mood of the picture, I want dark, dark blacks in it. 
Wow, what a beautiful spot. I, yeah, I, don't, I feel like cool it's in the church. attic of a church or something. Yeah, it's cool. Gorgeous, yeah. And great spot for portraits. Uh, nicely done. I, yeah. I can't think of anything else oh, to suggest. Very original. All right, a night photo here. Yeah. Um, uh, the first thing that my goes Maya goes to is this <laughs> plane that flew through the scene. Yeah. And I'll say just habitually, I always remove these things. You just have to remove them in post because, you know what, we're not going to get rid of airplanes. So, oh, I'm zooming that back out. So many airplanes you realize when you take night photos. Yeah. Um, um, and I don't know. There's a lot of beach down here that maybe we don't need. What was that? Uh, what do you think, Charles? Um, Did we help out a little bit? I'll say another um, thing with night shots. I like, is, the, I like the mountain reflection in the water. Oh. You know, I never even... Yeah, I guess I didn't really see that. Well. I know I kept you around for a reason. Maybe we could pull it in just a little bit. Yeah, and then I'd say, like, make the crops that you see more of the right side of the picture because you cropped out the reflection in the water since... There you go. There you go. I don't know. I'm not even really a photographer. <laughs> don't get insecure, Charles. <laughs> when, how did this line get back in here? I've never taken a picture. All right. That's another thing about it. I like that shot. Whatever. Cool Jesse's getting down. tired. It's Don't take so it personally tired. if these are your pictures. We just have too many pictures and Chelsea yeah, gets burnt out. I've been working like a 12 hour day at this point. <laughs> yeah, you people need to pay Chelsea overtime. Nobody she pays gets me burned anything. out. Everything's free. So I love the processing on this picture. I love the tone. It's so old timey. It makes me want to drink tea. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Really? Could you possibly have any criticism for this picture? Maybe there's a little noise in the upper right hand corner. There's like it's a little bit like patchy or something. That didn't bother me. Like no, you're getting some it wouldn't. Epic it wouldn't. Yeah. Whoa! Oh, wait, I just want to see oh, what we got lies. left here. Oh, all right. We just got two pictures left. Uh, you're almost there, Charles. Uh, <laughs> Waffle eyes. Um. I would this most people would call this a fly <laughs> rather than waffle eyes, <laughs> um, but it's a good sign that you can see the individual eyelets. These give flies 360 degree view, which is why they're so hard to swat. <laughs> um, so this is a very detailed shot, and I actually like the shallow depth of field here. I think it works out really well. Um, Perfect. I can't think of anything I to add. Picture. I wouldn't add a thing. This picture's cool. Let's talk about it. It's black and it's white. You know, actually, it was just coincidence the way it was zoomed in, but just looking at this zoom, don't you think that's a much more compelling shot than this? No, I like it zoomed out. I disagree with you. Chelsea's terribly mistaken here. Um, so I'm just going to zoom this way in and just show you that you know, flower shots. That's stupid. And do you still still think it's stupid when I go to black and white? Yep. Zoom out in black and white. That's right, so kind of nice, actually. Fine, you win. <laughs> better here or better here? Not better. Up. Oh, not. I don't know. Really. That's pretty good. I think I actually like the color. I like the color. It's delicate. It's monochromatic. But yeah, your subject doesn't need to be the entire flower. Sometimes it's just part of a flower. And this was our last photo, so thank you for joining us. Yay! All right, so that pretty much wraps it up. We went over your pictures. We had some great news for you this time. Uh, we told you about Buy our stuff. Our DVD. DVDs. Go to sdpcommunity.com. Uh, for the DVDs and for these t-shirts that you see us wearing. Very cool. Thanks so much. See you next time.